Hi! In this video, I'll describe what electric potential is, uh, why it's useful, and finally what equipotential lines are. So, uh, in other videos, you've already seen what electric potential is. Uh, we told you that it's, um, it's related to energy. So, when you look at electric potential energy, that's given by uh, some amount of charge which is placed within electric potential times the electric potential or sometimes we call it voltage that's what this V stands for so you've seen this and we also told you that electric potential is related to electric field so change in electric potential as you go from for example point A to B is equal to the um, electric field times the distance from A to B and you have to mind the signs and directions and all that um, did I write them in the wrong order? Ah, that's fine. So you've seen these formulas, but uh, you may not have, um, well, or maybe you do, have a good sense of what electric potential is. And what I want to emphasize is that electric potential is actually very closely related to the electric potential energy. Um, that's uh, actually why sometimes I like to use the term voltage, because... Um, Electric potential and electric potential energy are related, but they sound similar, but they are not the same. So, some, so I like to call it voltage, so that it, um, so that you understand that voltage is different from electric potential energy, uh, but they are related. Voltage times charge gives you the electric potential energy. So, uh, consider this situation. For example, I have this uh, space out here, uh, the setup used for the electric field. Uh, let's say I have a charge out here, and we talked about how this charge produces electric field pointing away from it, so that if I place another charge, it'll get pushed away from it. Now, we can also describe this in terms of energy. Uh, the picture I want you to visualize where this positive charge is, I want you to visualize a kind of a hill where the positive charge is. Imagine that positive charge creates a hill um, around itself. A hill. So if you have a hill, if you place another positive charge here, this positive charge will roll down the hill. And that's sort of what happens here. When I place a positive charge here, it gets pushed away. And it's quote unquote rolling down the voltage hill. Um, as it moves away, it decreases in electric potential energy. Or, you know, if I want to push it up the hill, then I have to do work to push it up the hill and doing that work stores the energy as electric potential energy. So, so that's uh, some intuition about electric potential energy with electric field. Now, I'd like to uh, measure this voltage around this positive charge. You see that this voltage as being measured by my voltmeter increases as I get near the positive charge. And uh, I can actually place it, it at different locations that get the same voltage, like it's 22 volts here. It's also 22 volts around here. So with this tool, what I'm going to do is let me draw lines where the voltage is the same. So let me start out with the 3 volts. This is set up so that it's at 0 volts infinitely far away from the positive charge, which I can't do on a finite screen. So let me start out with the 3 volts. This is all the points that's at 3 volts. It sort of forms a circle around this point. All right, um, let me try, try drawing some of these lines at equal intervals of potential, equal intervals of voltage. So after three comes six. So, okay, I have to go this far. So six volt. These are all the lines where voltage is at six volt. It's six volt to here. It's a six volt to here. All right, next one should be nine volt. Uh, around here. Next one should be 12 volt. Next one should be 15 volt. And as I'm drawing this, I have a question for you. Have you seen something that looks like this before? Um, 15 volts, 18 volts. Let me just do one more. Um, 21 volt. Close enough. Have you seen something that looks like this? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if you've seen a topological map, 
Uh, well, I guess this is, a bit, this is a bit of an unnatural feature. So maybe you haven't seen this on a topological map. So topological map is... Um, topological map? I think that's the right term. It's a kind of a map that shows the elevation. If you go hiking, you might have seen uh, maps like those. So that you can tell, uh, do I have to walk uphill or do, can I walk mostly level ground? Well, that's what these equipotential lines are showing. It's showing an equal change of voltage or if you are have some amount of charge like one coulomb how much energy will be changing at different dis distances so uh, when you have um, so the closerly spaced lines indicate more rapid change in voltage because voltage is changing over a shorter distance or same changes are happening over a shorter distance uh, let me show you a few more different equipotential lines because this whole concentric circles they look a little bit unnatural so let's try um, a dipole that you saw earlier. So here's the positive charge. Here's a negative charge. As we said, this forms a dipole. Um, and let me just look around what the potential looks like. Oh, there's a point where potential is zero. Uh, that sounds like a good starting point. Let me just draw one here. Oh, straight line, more or less. Interesting. Uh, let me go left. Let's see. Let me do it in three volt intervals again. Go left, uh, 3 volts here. All right. Um, go left again, 6 volts, 9 volts, um, 12 volts, um, 15 volts. All right, maybe that's good enough. Uh, let me go to the right. Now, uh, as I go to the right, it's um, Minus 3 volts, more or less. Minus 6 volts, more or less. Minus 9 volts, more or less. Minus 12 volts. Ah, 12 volts, more or less. Minus 15 volts. Let me stop there. Um, so these are equipotential lines uh, around the dipole. Well, that looks interesting. Um, I guess I want to uh, highlight a few details here that's uh, interesting, <laughs> at least to me. So, one of the details here is that um, look at the relative direction of the electric field and compare that to the direction of the volt equipotential line. You will notice that they are perpendicular. And, um, yeah, they are perpendicular. And they are perpendicular because this whole change in voltage thing it's actually a dot product and there's a dot here so it, you know when you're looking at change in voltage you are actually looking at the electric field along the direction of movement so um, so as you move perpendicular to the field your voltage doesn't change so that's what this uh, drawing is showing uh, like this field line here you see that it goes more or less perpendicular to the uh, equipotential lines that are drawn um, that's one feature and the other feature is, well, um, I just want you to, as you look at this, I want you to imagine um, looking at some geographical feature. So um, at the location of the positive charge, oops, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Um, oh, can I go back? Control G? No. Okay. Um, so imagine those uh, circles that were there before. Um, at the, near the location of positive charge, you have... Um, you have a hill, and these are the, the topological um, things around the hill. Near the location of the negative charge, you have a val valley. And these are lines drawn, um, uh, sort of topological equal elevation lines drawn around the valley. All right, let me wrap up this video with just something fun and random. Let me just randomly place these charges. So I have these three mountains here, um, maybe some valleys here um, um, yeah all right let's see what uh, equipotential lines um, due to these three mountains and three craters look like all right uh, there is a zero equipotential line still all right let's start out with that uh, let me make the distance a little bit larger five volts five volts here um, ten volts here um, 15 volts here. Oh, wait, is there a, oh, I see, I missed the 15 volts here. 
Yeah, are you beginning to see the mountains? Um, 20 volt somewhere around here. And yeah, let me catch this one as well. And another one here. And I guess I'll stop there. All right. And uh, going downhill, here's minus 5 volts. Uh, minus 5 volts, close enough. Minus 10 volts. Minus uh, 15 volts. And uh, minus 20 volts and so on. Um, yeah, so maybe this is now beginning to look more like a topological map. Um, you will have to see the numbers to see if these rep, um, the, uh, the circles on the left top represents craters or hills. Um, yeah, so well, maybe I can show values. Yeah, yeah, if I show values, then from these values, you can tell, oh, these uh, ones on the left top are hills, ones on the right bottom are three uh, nearby craters. So that's a potential, it's a way of uh, representing what, um, uh, what energy a charge would have when I place a charge here. So along this zero volt line, right now I haven't placed any charge here, so there, there's no real energy to talk about. Once I place this one nanocoulomb charge here at zero volt line, well, it'll have zero joules of energy. If I place the 5 volt EQ potential line, it'll have energy of 5 times 10 to the minus 9 joules, and so on. So, that's, uh, 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 this is the video about potential. Let me know if there are any questions. Um, and, uh, uh, I, and I just want to emphasize, you know, this voltage and electric field stuff, it can seem abstract, but it's um, fundamentally important to the physics of electricity. Um, in fact, we physicists consider these electric fields to be the fundamental quantity. And electric force is something we happen to measure when we place a charge inside the electric field. So, all right, uh, I'll leave you there. Um, uh, have fun working on the rest of chapter 12. Um, I'll try to upload chapter 13 and 14 videos pretty soon. Until then, good night.